it's actually uh, A major. So it's a uh, you are my fire or I want it that way. I played this game with my friend Anna where I sang random pop songs in whatever key I felt comfortable with. And then since she knows the songs, she was able to tell me the real key off the top of her head because Anna has perfect pitch. I've got this, okay. Just a small town girl it's living not. in a lonely world. Okay, so it's actually in okay. just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Living in a lonely world. Uh, that's a C sharp. F. B flat. Oh my god, you're so fast! Amazing. Yeah, you just know. You just know. I've been playing piano on and off since I was a kid. The musical ability that's always fascinated me is perfect pitch. I want to dig into whether it can be learned. Hi, I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl, and I'm here at UCSD with three musicians, with Mirren, Jeff, and Kat. Mirren has perfect pitch. Hey. <laughs> and Jeff has perfect pitch. Uh, it's a tritone, so it's F sharp and C, I think. Yeah. So how do you describe perfect or absolute pitch? I would say it is the ability to sort of identify a pitch in the absence of any other relative pitch. For non-musicians, I like to explain it as sort of everyone else sees colors, but they don't have names for them. They're like, oh, that one's different from that one. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that's blue, that's red, that's yellow. So for instance, if like a microwave beeps, I would be able to tell you what pitch that was. That's a B. We had some fun demonstrating perfect pitch. That's a B. G, E flat. That's a C sharp. That's a really high C. F. That's an F sharp. That's an A. <laughs> I could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> As we kept doing demonstrations of perfect pitch, I noticed something. There are certain factors that influence how fast these musicians can identify pitches. Check out Mirren, who's a violinist, guessing notes for violin and then for piano. She's more confident on violin. But before I dig into that, I want to make a quick distinction between perfect pitch and relative pitch. Relative pitch is this. No matter your music background, you can probably tell that these are two different notes. But you might not be able to identify them. With relative pitch, given a reference note like C, you can identify other notes. Eric, give me some notes between A and G. E. Ah. Uh, D. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and that's my mediocre skill. Cat has very strong relative pitch. Because I play the violin and I've heard the notes, um, it's E, A, D, and G, and I've listened to those notes so many times throughout my, uh, like since I was young, and so I can, I can sing those notes um, without, I guess, without help. Both relative pitch and perfect pitch are affected by something called timbre. And this is where I get to bring in the physics. Play the same note on two different instruments, and they don't sound the same. What is a note though? No, really, what is a musical note? It's commonly called a pitch or a frequency, and the explanation goes like this. Sound is a wave. Something vibrates, like a string, and moves the air back and forth to create areas of high and low pressure that get carried as a wave to your ear. All good. We can graph the high and low pressure as something you've seen many times. A wave like this. High pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. I've got this really cool app that allows you to graph any sounds. So right away, you can see that the waves of different instruments look different, and they're not the beautiful sine waves that we're used to seeing. All of these waves have something in common, a main or fundamental frequency. It's this up and down pattern repeating at a specific rate or frequency. Higher notes have a higher fundamental frequency. But then there are all these other little bumps, and they come from adding in higher frequencies to your main frequency. Check out this website where you can listen to different frequencies and then add them to see what it looks like on the graph and then hear what it sounds like. I will link to all these programs in the description. So, 
It's the shape of the wave of these different instruments that defines timbre. It's the shape of the wave that makes the instrument sound brassy or bright or mellow. Now back to pitch recognition. It makes total sense to me that different timbres would be harder to recognize because they're not the same note. Some have more frequencies added in. And if you learn music on one instrument, well then you learn the notes on that specific timbre. I would say that the timbre affects my ability for sure, like I'm definitely better on string instruments than I am on mm -hmm. piano, than I am on like pure sine wave tones and like also voices, sort of mm -hmm. a notoriously difficult one for a lot of people. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like to think of recognizing different timbres like recognizing accents of a language. And I save your breath, cured your parts. And uh, Scott, her questions, what uh, match and sack by cover? I had a very hard time understanding the New Zealand accent when I was there earlier this month, but over time I was able to get better at it because I already know the language. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like perfect pitch can be learned after a certain period of your life. You did not get sort of musical training or in intensive musical exposure before the age of seven. You're kind of very unlikely to develop absolute pitch. Um, it's obviously not always the case. Like one of my really good friends, she started music at nine and she still developed it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just the vast majority, there seems to be this sort of critical period that over overlaps sort of with language acquisition, mm -hmm. actually. Well then, imagining what it's like to have this perfect memory of a note that you can recall and recognize seems impossible to me. It's like asking a baby to find meaning in what they perceive as random noises coming out of their parents' mouths. Hey Aya, what do you think it would be like to perceive meaning from the random noises coming out of my mouth? Hmm, um. what do you think? Pretty cute, but unlikely. But for now, we can take comfort in the fact that we can recognize the difference between a banjo and a pipe organ. Thank you so much for watching, and happy physicsing! Maybe you're a firework. Yeah, so that's actually a baby, you're a firework. <laughs> What's so impressive about that to me is that it's like Anna's memory of a song is tied up with what key it's in. It's like it's impossible for people with perfect pitch to remember a song in any other key. In fact, Jeff described getting totally confused when he tries to play a song on a keyboard that's transposed so that the note that you play is different than the note that comes out. Oh, it no, makes it's a an note F? that is not that. Yeah, mm. so that's F. Oh, man. But I'm pressing the C key, and this completely screws me over. Yeah. Like, I can't play it anymore. Really? It's, it's done. It's diseased. I can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see you try to do that? I just like pick a song I know really well. So let me switch it back to normal so I know. <laughs> so I can show you what the song in my head sounds yeah. like. Um, it's very simple piece. So that's in C sharp minor. It's a song from Zeno Gears, actually, for all of you out there. Fun. So I just jammed the transpose button a bunch of times. I don't know how. And try to do it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to rely on purely muscle memory. 